We know that when you get pregnant, you may expect to gain weight or get some stretch marks, but there are so many other changes that happen with your skin, your hair, and your nails that no one really ever talks about. So that's what we're focusing on today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California, and I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The body goes through a ton of different hormonal, metabolic, and even immunological changes while we are pregnant. But some of the most notable changes are seen in our skin, and it's estimated that about 90% of people who are pregnant will notice skin changes. A lot of people know that dermatologists are skin experts, but we also study the hair and nails and so I feel like it's important to cover all of those things when we're talking about the changes you may see in pregnancy. Let's start with the changes that you may see in your skin. And it's not all bad. You may have heard of something called the pregnancy glow, which is when pregnant people begin to look a lot more luminous and vital. And that's due to a few different things. One, when you become pregnant, there's an increase in blood flow. So our blood volume increases about 45%. Because you have that increased blood flow in the skin, it also can make your skin look a lot more rosy and plump. And that's part of the glow. In pregnancy, you also have an increased production of oil from your sebaceous glands. So that can lend to the glow as well. Although for some people, they're going to think they look a little more shiny. Probably one of the most common changes people see when they become pregnant is this increase in pigmentation. And there are many different types of pigmentation, so we'll go over some of those. First is melasma. So over 50% of women who get pregnant are going to be affected by melasma, which is essentially these dark patches that often develop on the cheeks, the forehead, and occasionally even the chest and upper arms. Melasma can also affect the nose, the upper lip, and even the eyebrows. I also find that melasma is a little bit underdiagnosed, or people will come in for this irregular pigmentation that they perceive to just be sun damage and sunspots that have come up over time. But when I look closer, it's actually melasma. This increase in pigmentation is due to some of the hormonal fluctuations that happen during pregnancy. So you get an increase of progesterone and estrogen, both of which drive melasma. It's the other reason why some people, when they start a birth control pill, notice that they get melasma. And then you also get this increase of something called melanocyte stimulating hormone, and that also produces pigment in the skin. Another type of pigment that most people notice during their pregnancy is this brown vertical line that usually goes from right above the pubic bone up to the belly button, and sometimes all the way up to the chest called the linea nigra. Again, this is due to the increased melanin production during pregnancy. And speaking of increased melanin production, a lot of pregnant women will also notice increased pigmentation or darkening of their nipples as well as their genitals. You can also get increased flexural pigmentation. So that's darkening of things like the area behind the neck, the armpit, and the groin. Aside from pigmentation, another change that a lot of people will notice during pregnancy is that they have these new growths popping up. Probably one of the most common is skin tags. Skin Skin tags can show up anywhere, but are most commonly seen in the folds, so the groin and the armpits, but can also happen around the neck. Skin tags are these harmless growths that usually have a very narrow base, and they can range in size from about one millimeter all the way up to a centimeter. So they can get quite large, though the ones that occur in pregnancy tend to be on the smaller side. The interesting thing, though, is a lot of these growths will actually go away after pregnancy. If they don't, they're very easy to remove, so you can always go into your dermatologist and discuss ways to remove them. The next type of growth I'm gonna talk about are moles. And the reason I wanna focus on this is because I think there's this myth out there that you get a lot more moles during your pregnancy or that your moles can change. And the reality is your moles should not really significantly change during pregnancy. Now, if they're on an area of your body that tends to expand, like your abdomen or your buttocks, it's normal to see them sort of expand with the baseline skin. However, if you notice a mole that is changing during during pregnancy, you cannot just attribute it to being pregnant. You need to get that checked out. The last type of growth that's really common to see in pregnancy is what we call vascular growth. So things related to new blood vessel growth. This will often show up as something called cherry angiomas, which are bright red bumps that can appear anywhere on your body. You can also get something called spider angiomas, which are more like a central red bump with these little radiating telangiectasia or radiating blood vessels. These blood vessel growths are due to the increase in estrogen. Speaking of vascular or blood vessel related changes, that doesn't just manifest as growth that can show up in a lot of different ways. Like most things during pregnancy, these vascular changes are due to these hormonal shifts. So something like progesterone, which rises during your pregnancy, relaxes smooth muscle and smooth muscle is what makes up the walls of your blood vessels. So as that relax to prepare you for giving birth, it also can make your blood vessels dilate to the point where you can get things like varicose veins. With these stretched out blood vessels and that increase in blood volume, you can also notice other things. So a lot of women, especially if they have fair skin, will notice 
palmar erythema or pink areas on their palms. It usually happens on your thenar eminence and your hypothenar eminence. Another thing that's attributable to vascular changes is this swelling that a lot of people will experience in their ankles and in their feet, especially as their pregnancy progresses. This is due to the fact that you have an increased amount of blood circulating in your system. Also, your vessels can become a little bit leaky and fluid can begin to pool in your lower extremities. The other thing you have going on during pregnancy is you have this big belly and that belly is actually putting pressure on the vessels in your thighs and is preventing that blood flow from getting from your feet up through your legs and then back up to your heart. And then another thing that people may notice, and this is mostly attributable to the increased estrogen during pregnancy, is that they have an increase in something called telangiectasia, which are essentially very small, almost thread-like dilated blood vessels. And we think of these often occurring in people who have rosacea on the cheeks and nose and chin, but in pregnant women, they can happen all over the body, but I most often will see them on the upper back and the chest. Another thing pregnant people might start to notice is varicose veins and spider veins. And again, this is due to that decreased blood flow from your legs back up to your heart. It's also very, very genetic. So if your mom or your dad struggles with varicose veins, you're more likely to get them during your pregnancy. And one way to counteract this is to make sure that you wear compression socks. Now, I know when I was pregnant, the last thing I wanted to do is put on a tight pair of socks. And honestly, it wasn't even physically possible at the end, but as much as you can do to prevent that, or even just keep your feet elevated when you're relaxing or sitting at home, those are ways that you can decrease the risk of these irregular veins in the legs. Aside from these skin changes, you might notice shifts in your underlying skin conditions throughout your pregnancy. So for example, if you struggle with something like psoriasis, about half of people who get pregnant, their psoriasis will actually improve. But of course that means for the other half, their psoriasis is going to stay the same or perhaps even get worse. The same thing goes for things like eczema. So there is a distinct type of eczema that you can develop during your pregnancy, but also if you are prone to eczema at baseline, it can definitely get worse throughout your pregnancy. These changes in these inflammatory skin conditions like psoriasis and atopic dermatitis or eczema are really due to the immunological changes in your skin that accompany this time in your life. Another thing that can appear during pregnancy is acne and breakouts. And a lot of women will come into my office, they're like, Dr. Ellis, I'm like really early on in my pregnancy. I don't have acne now, but I want like a game plan for if I'm going to develop acne. And it's really hard because some people's acne does not get worse during pregnancy and for some people it will. And so it's really about looking at the acne that you have and choosing a game plan accordingly. Now there are only certain medications that are considered safe to prescribe during pregnancy. So that's also an important conversation to have with your dermatologist. If you're wondering what things I like to use during pregnancy or what I recommend for your skin during pregnancy, I have a whole YouTube video dedicated to that. I think there's even a myth that says that if you're having a boy, your skin might act or behave one way. And if you're having a girl, it might act and behave another way. None of that has ever been proven though. But one reason why someone might experience more acne breakouts during their pregnancy is because you have increased oil production. And oil production is one of the things, aside from clogged pores and bacteria, that leads to acne breakouts. Another condition that I tend to see worsen in patients who are pregnant is their keratosis pilaris. So KP or keratosis pilaris are these little bumps that some people will get on the outside of their arms sometimes even on their buttocks or their thighs. It's also known as chicken skin. And for whatever reason, we often see it get exacerbated by pregnancy, but then that exacerbation resolves once the baby has been delivered. And the final thing is that people might notice that their skin just changes in general. And you can't always predict how it's going to change, but some people will notice they're more oily. Some people will notice they're more dry. Some people will notice more skin sensitivity. So I know with pregnancy, there's so many unknowns. And so we want to plan ahead as much as possible, but sometimes you just have to meet your skin where it's at and not get so hung up on what you think your skin should be doing or how it used to be. And and really treat the skin that you have in the moment. And then lastly, we should talk a little bit about stretch marks. I think everyone understands that this is a possibility to develop during your pregnancy, but I think what a lot of people don't realize is they don't tend to show up until the final three months when you're doing your most amount of growing. And unfortunately, putting on a body oil or cocoa butter or frequent massage is really not going to stop them from coming. Whether or not you get stretch marks is somewhat genetically predetermined and it's also going to depend on how much weight you gain during your pregnancy and how fast that occurs. If you're interested in knowing more about stretch marks, I have a YouTube video dedicated to explaining stretch marks in more depth, as well as the treatments that actually do work. Pivoting from skin, let's move on to talking about the hair changes that you may see during pregnancy. The first one is a popular one, which is this development of thicker, fuller hair during pregnancy. It's a huge plus. And the reason for that is our hair is always in one of three phases. It's either in a growth phase, 
a rest phase or transitioning from a growth to a rest phase. And during pregnancy, our hair stays in the growth phase a lot longer. So normally when something would be resting or even shedding, you actually have more hair growing at one time. So that can make the hair both look longer and also appear fuller. Unfortunately, that thicker, fuller hair does not last forever. So after you deliver it, typically three months after, all of those hairs that were growing and we were so excited about shift into the rest and then ultimately into the shed phase. And that's called telogen effluvium. And it's one of the more stressful parts of being postpartum is that you can experience this massive shedding of hair. But typically this is hair that you were going to lose anyway, but it certainly doesn't make that shedding process feel any less traumatic. Something that people don't talk about as much during pregnancy is that some people will experience hair thinning. So that's also something that we see in some patients. Another thing people might experience is increased hair growth, but not on their head. So because of the circulating hormones during pregnancy, you can develop something called hirsutism, which is increased hair growth in what we call a male pattern distribution. So that can be on the chin, on the lower abdomen, on the lower back, and around the nipples. So we've touched on skin, we've talked about hair, let's talk a little bit about nail changes in pregnancy. Now I think a lot of people expect their nails to grow thicker and stronger during pregnancy, but actually more people experience nail brittleness. And part of that is because your nails are growing faster during pregnancy. And this is thought to be due to the estrogen increase, which increases peripheral blood flow and essentially makes the nails grow faster. But when they're growing faster, your body is essentially putting less effort into making a healthy, strong nail. And so even though they're growing faster, they may also be weaker. But here's one thing for sure that no one talks about during your pregnancy, and that is you're at increased risk for nail infections with fungus. So if you're walking around in a public pool or public shower, be sure to wear your flip flops. So the last thing I wanna to touch on is changes in your general facial features that happen during pregnancy. I think we're all expecting to get a little bit fuller in the face, but one thing that's become kind of popular to talk about on social media in the past few years is this pregnancy nose that people get. And that's because as you have this increased blood flow, the nose is filled with blood vessels. And so a lot of people in that final month of pregnancy will notice that their nose appears larger. And even though your nose may be getting bigger, your lips will also get bigger too because of that increased blood flow. And I've had so many patients who, after they give birth, come in and get lip filler for the very first time because they're craving getting the lips that they had when they were pregnant. I also wanna reassure you that the changes that you see in your nose and in your lips are temporary. So everything reverts to normal after you deliver and after your blood volume returns to its normal state, which is great for the nose, but definitely a little bit more of a sad situation when it comes to the lip volume. What are some changes you noticed in your appearance while you were pregnant? Definitely share them in the comments below. I'm very interested. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.